Hi guys and welcome to today's live stream. Um, today I will start with answering questions on uh, some that have been getting on the YouTube channel for last uh, week or so. And afterwards I will check out the questions in chat box. And also, if you guys do stay uh, on the live stream until the end, I will give away two bonuses so you can implement right away regarding your chaos strategy. Uh, one of them is basically uh, quite important one that I think will be very beneficial to you who are uh, trying to still make a grow. And it is about finding the right demo roller, right? Finding the right demo roller to use and how to use it. So this will be very helpful. And uh, I will share the video at the end of the live stream. Uh, and you also, like, you only will get access uh, to it uh, who are attending live stream live. So let's get started with questions. And uh, after I will check the chat box. All right. First question is about uh, can I use any demo roller for here? Uh, that's the kind of question uh, I got here in the comment section. And uh, in, my answer is no. You need to know which roller you are going to use because uh, some rollers can be even a bit dangerous to use if you are using a uh, wrong roller and they can cause damage, uh, cause damage to fear protocols, causing damage to scalp and increase inflammation. And I can show you basically a uh, roller I mean by it. By it is basically a rollers that are having a, a lot of blades, not needles, but blades. Right? And those kind of rollers you, you should not use in your skull because what will happen is that they will basically uh, make uh, uh, increase information on your skull. They will also damage your skull and uh, they will easily pull out here, uh, possibly also cause damage to hair protocols. So you need to be very careful when you uh, are kind of looking for the right demo roller because not all of them are the same. Right? There are a lot of cheap options in the market, but you need to be sure that when you buy it, and this, by the way, is not a cheap roller, but it's still a garbage. So. So basically, you need to be sure what kind of roller you are getting and uh, make sure that it actually is the needles and uh, it is the right type of needles. Right? You don't want to have this kind of roller on your skull, uh, like, uh, like I showed you. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, next question is about Minox deal. Uh, do you apply Minox deal right after demo rolling or do you wait 12 hours? How often should you? Uh, when you use demo roller. Uh, so this is an interesting question because it is also an important question. And I basically, uh, when I demo roll, I uh, do it uh, or apply Minox uh, right away. Uh, this is what I do. Or I did when I was still my carrier. But right, right now I don't need to because my here are basically where they are. So I don't use uh, Minox or demo as a token anymore, uh, as I did in the past. But uh, for you guys who do still my carrier, you need to use it more often. So. Uh, next question is about, uh, hey, Alex, have you experienced any vitamin deficiencies? Uh, yes, in the past I did. Um, basically, that was also one of the problems why I was losing here. It was basically a combination of uh, deficiencies because my diet back then was uh, was kind of like a, just kind of one style meals. I was eating all the time the same foods and there was no vitamins there. There was like a they are like a processed foods uh, and uh, basically foods that uh, were not giving that much nutrition. And it also caused uh, deficiencies regarding vitamins, minerals, and so on. So, and I can show you some of the pictures uh, of when I was having this problem myself, just to give you a bit of reference. And uh, let's see, we can take a few pictures here. So, this is basically me back when I was having deficiency issues on my skull. You can see that I was starting to thin out, right? Um, and this one again, you can clearly see the things were uh, like when you when you are having uh, deficiency problems, the uh, pattern of the hair loss is quite strange. Right? It's uh, kind of a strange hair loss pattern when one is having, like for example, this picture as well, right? Uh, you can see my hair loss on the sides. But at the same time, you can see the, like how nicely I was able to fill in my sides, right? Uh, and uh, let's check the um, more here. All right, you can see how how bad my hair loss was back then. There's another picture of spoken right here. And uh, so yeah, I had deficiencies in uh, nutrition as well. So, so basically, it is important. Uh, like I often see that guys kind of respond. That it is not important to take uh, vitamins because they don't. Uh, have that much, but they do if you have a deficiency. Right? You do have deficiencies in some kind of vitamins and minerals, 
then it is important to have them and bake them. Uh, okay, next question is about, um, uh, let's see, next question is about uh, Hellman. Uh, and the question is basically using Hellman, can it lead to hair loss? And um, yes, it can if you get scalp information from the helmet or a helmet kind of uh, causes uh, some kind of dermatitis in your scalp. Right? I've been talking about the hats in the past, that some materials in the hats can cause dermatitis and cause uh, inflammation and cause hair loss afterwards. So you basically need to be careful right? because it can happen. So if you do feel some kind of itchiness, potential redness in your scalp after using a helmet or a hat or, or anything or uh, some kind of hardware, so it basically means that there is something wrong, right? So either you, you are having information or your scalp reacts with so. Okay, next one. So a question about how old I was when I started to lose hair. And I was 18 years old uh, when I started to notice hair loss. Um, and uh, like I said in previous videos, is that I didn't do anything about it until I was 24. Uh, and basically, I tried a natural treatments, natural methods first for about a year. They did not work. Uh, my hair was still shutting off. And then I started with uh, financial occupation, in my case, back in uh, 2008. So this is like a quick background story. <clears throat> okay, next question is about uh, uh, question about uh, Chrome. Uh, why takes it, why does it take a long time to read your Chrome area? And uh, basically, he has been doing a gross donation for eight months and haven't seen Chrome results. And uh, yes, Chrome often can take uh, much longer than uh, hairline on temples. Like for, for me, uh, what I have noticed in my case is that it did take around the double of time to regrow back my Chrome compared to hairline and temples. Uh, and basically, one of the reasons is that my Chrome was quite quite thin, so it was quite bigger areas that needed to fill in. And the other thing is that the, for other reason, I feel like temples and hairline open is responding much faster to the plan in treatment than drones. But when you see results in the temples and hairline, it basically means that the uh, treatment is working. So you at some point will see results also in chrome as well, right? just to take more time. A question about are you still using finastri for pressure? Yes, I do. Uh, and uh, as I said before, I need to block EHP because if my day EHP gets uh, spikes, it spikes up, I will start to lose basically here again if I start this, uh, with uh, taking finastri or profession my case. And uh, like also recently, I know that there are things that can spike my DHT, like, uh, like I mentioned in, the, in one of the videos that I was taking some gym supplements, and what happens is that I Okay, next question is about how many times a week do you shampoo or your hair? Uh, I do it daily. Right? I do it daily because, uh, like I said before, uh, I can easily get information on my scalp. And if one can implement this, get easily information on the scalp, it is not optimal uh, not washing hair often. Right? You need to wash hair as often as possible because information will cause damage. Right? And you need to be sure that you are preventing it. Next question is about uh, uh, my scalp gets very oily, uh, and is it bad because my hair also gets oily and it needs some more hair pulp? Yes, uh, oily scalp is a problem. At, uh, the scalp should not be oily. So either there is something wrong, maybe you need to look into your diet. Check uh, like I did a live stream about diet in the past. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. And uh, diet is important. It can also lead to illness. Like, I don't know your background story. Maybe you could also look into DHT blocking because I remember when I was having a lot of wellness or to sell them, I was not blocking DHT. Right? Um, each time when I, like, let's say I stopped with the DHT blocking, my illness increased. Right? Uh, it's, my scalp becomes more oily and I see also more cell on my skin as well. Okay, next question is about. Uh, um, Nizero shampoo, uh, and it's a question about Nizero shampoo and uh, uh, and uh, adding peppermint uh, oil to it. Okay, yes. And uh, basically, what happens is that the uh, scalp is itching, and uh, I guess you are losing here. Uh, so yeah, like I said previously, Nizero shampoo is not for everyone. Everyone, right? there are some guys who can have a, a lot of benefits from it, 
and some guys can have a uh, increased information. So you need to be kind of careful on the check options because there are there are seven shampoos, there are several options that can be substituted to neither of shampoo, right? Um, Ketoconazole is also something that is not, uh, is not uh, optimal for everyone. Right? You need to kind of check out which shampoo, uh, which kind of ingredients, uh, like Ketoconazole, is it optimal for you or not? So you need to kind of troubleshoot uh, the situations. Uh, what products are using for hair styling? Is the uh, hair wax uh, fine? Uh, yes, it, but it depends again uh, what kind of hair wax it is. If, it, if it's a, like a hair wax with um, good natural ingredients, then I guess it's fine. But if it's uh, some kind of um, added things to it, uh, it can lead to scalp problems. Right? So you need to be careful what to use. In my, in my case, I use got to be hair gel and it has been okay for me. So. Uh, does do the screen take scalp information? Uh, like uh, in a way, it does. Like if your scalp information is caused by DST, like uh, you have too much sebum, you have oilness, and those kind of things, acne, pimples, then yes, that's most likely it means that there is too much DST, and it is uh, can be helpful to block DST by sevaphenostrid, do the screen, or some other way of doing it. Uh, but if the information is caused by something else, and it can be caused by other things as well, right? Uh, then no, the dust read or it won't help to solve, to solve scalp information. Right? It basically depends on what is the root cause of the information. Right? If it's uh, just a uh, oilness uh, and cell phone production and pimples acne, so possibly the dust read alone can solve these problems. Okay, next question about the best diet, keto, vegan, or vegetarian. Uh, it depends again. Right? But remember that every diet, like limited diets, they also have possibility of different deficiencies in them as well, right? So it's like a, you need to uh, understand the diet and you need to dive deep into it if you are going to do a specific diet, either it's a keto diet or veget vegetarian diet, because there is always good things about the, those diets and there is bad things about the diet. So you need to kind of find out what can happen, what kind of deficiencies it can lead to, what kind of problems it can lead to if you keep the stick into the same diet, right? because like I showed in this beginning of the live stream, in my pictures, is that when I was having uh, diets, it was basically kind of same all the time. It led to uh, huge deficiencies. Right? So you need to be careful and you need to understand the diet, right? not just follow one diet blindly without checking out what, what kind of hand result you can have regarding deficiencies and deficiency. And, uh, about a question about dizziness with thermal ring on uh, applying minoxidil. Yes, it basically means that you're absorbing too much of minoxidil, right? so you need to be careful. Right? So it basically means that you maybe need to take uh, longer breaks in your thermal ring or uh, possibly uh, uh, possibly not to do it too harsh with magnetic because you should not feel dizziness after applying minoxidil. So that's, uh, that's a red flag. <laughs> Okay, the next question is about uh, oral uh, minoxidil. Is it better than topical minoxidil? Uh, like, the thing is that you can get the results. Like, uh, I personally prefer topical minoxidil because the topical minoxidil is something that you are targeting just scalp and you do not target all the body. With oral minoxidil, it may work, yes, of course, but at the same time, you are getting it all over the place. And this is not optimal. So that's why. I would prefer much better to have a topical minoxidil than oral. Plus, it's very, it's not easy to get uh, oral minoxidil uh, outside the US, for example. So, um, uh, basically, it is possible to get it from prescription in European countries, but it is much harder. So, topical minoxidil in most cases is sufficient and do the job as well. So. Okay, next question is. How many times would you recommend doing magnesium a week? Uh, like I said, uh, I when I was still in Cairo, I was doing it daily. Uh, is it safe to magnesium the areas with vendors uh, here? Uh, yes, uh, it is. Uh, it is, but again, you kind of need to be aware of uh, that you are using correct uh, demo alert. And like I said in the beginning, I will add a bonus video to show you guys uh, who are watching. Live stream live and to show you how to how to do it. <clears throat> Is it bad to have a bleeding while demoraling? Uh, 
like if you are going up like noxidism, then yes, there should not be any bleeding from it. So. Uh, do you take one mg of phenostrid per day, uh, Alex? Uh, yes, uh, or I take 0 0.5, I have microdose, so uh, I, uh, I don't take one mg. So. I have tried it a few times, but uh, there is no extra benefits for me of taking it, so 0 0.5 has always worked very well for me, and uh, I kind of have been sticking to it since I started this. Uh, hey Alex, are you on a ketoconic diet? Uh, yes, I have tried it in the past, but like I said previously, that every diet has, like if you go for a specific diet, there's always some kind of possibilities for deficiencies, right? So you need to find limitations for diet and find out which one is better and which, uh, or which one can have uh, some problems with, and then you need to kind of like, plan it out if you just don't, don't follow a specific diet without knowing what kind of uh, end result uh, it can lead to. So. All right. A um, uh, question about, could you tell uh, please, more about the uh, mineralization? Yes, like I think I did a video about mineralization. Mineralization basically happens because of three factors. It can happen because of DHT, it can happen because of stress, or because of inflammation. Right? And all those three factors can lead to mineralization. So um, basically, if you are here are just kind of shedding out without mineralization, so basically means that there is something else wrong, right? Something else is off and needs to be addressed because there are other factors of hair loss besides DHT, inflammation, uh, and stress. Uh, but if you do see mineralization, like for example, uh, if you watch my some of my videos, sometimes I have mentioned that I when I have problems with my hair, uh, I and uh, I have increased DHT or there is some inflammatory outbreak. Is that my temples start to kind of become a bit more whitish in color, right? and it basically starts to many times. And then I know exactly that there is something wrong that I need to address. So, and uh, this is basically the thing is that uh, if you have a DHT issue or inflammation issue or stress issue, then you will see mineralization. If there is other causes of loss, then the hip just will fall out. That's kind of different. All right, guys, also as the questions I had uh, listed up for today, uh, I will ch check out the chat box now and see what you have been uh, asking. And I also will add the bonus for you guys. Uh, as I said uh, in the chat, uh, actually I will add two bonuses today, so you can uh, basically implement both of them right away in your care strategy to get results. And here's the second bonus. Yeah. And I check both of them because uh, they are uh, quite good ones. And uh, like I said, having the right dermal can be very helpful for you guys to uh, stimulate hearing. And the wrong dermal basically can cause issues and cause uh, trouble in your skull, including inflammation, but also damage hair follicles. So be wise about choosing right ones. Okay, I will check out the jar box now. And uh, let's see, the first one is uh, <clears throat> about minoxidil. Uh, is it permanent here? Uh, is minoxidil you know, or uh, Like uh, your question, I guess, is about uh, is minoxidil giving you permanent here if you are taking finasteride? Uh, in a way, yes, but it depends on uh, for how long you are going to apply minoxidil and uh, when you stop this, right? Because if you, uh, let's say, apply minoxidil for short times and they here will still be dependent, right? so it basically depends on for how long, what is your kind of your plan regarding uh, like using minoxidil and uh, how long you are going to take minoxidil. So. Can Finocity take more than one year to make it uh, effect visible? Uh, that sounds quite a long time. Uh, I would say that it, they, it should, you should see some kind of results after three, four months. Right? One year is too, it's too long. So I would say there is something off and it needs to be addressed soon. Uh, next question is about, uh, do you think Derma Roller is better than Derma Stem? Derma pen? Uh, it depends again. Right? Uh, both of them do the same thing, uh, but let's say if your scalp is very sensitive, so maybe they're using a dermal pen is a better option. So.
can uh, love testosterone to pose heal us? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Uh, I see there's some chat, uh, troubles chat today. So uh, uh, I look like you guys cannot post questions. Uh, I hope you did uh, get the bonuses I posted uh, on, on chat. So uh, if you did, just check it now because, like I said, they are all about the big implement and your strategy right away. So, uh, okay. All right, guys. Uh, I will end for today, and I hope you got all the information. And as always, for you guys who do want to join my program, you can schedule a call uh, below uh, this video. And uh, otherwise, thanks for attending, and see you next time. Cheers.